Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your girl Mitzi, and this is Mitzi. Let's think about it. Today, we are thinking with a special guest about surviving sexual abuse. You know, and this is something that we all really need to think about because sexual abuse is happening more often than not. And it's and it's kind of scary to find out. You, you hear it in the news, you hear it on media, you hear it all over the world. No, no one is safe and no one is exempt from this, you know, feeling this type of attack, you know, and, and I think that's the reason why this is so important for us to really think about, you know, so luckily for me, I, like I said, I have a special guest here, Kalpa, who is going to be um providing her story and her movements and her passion into this topic. Kalpa, why don't you go ahead and fully introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Kalpa Shri Gupta and I go by Kalpa. I am a childhood sexual abuse survivor, and I didn't tell my stories until the 40s. So I am here, Mitzi, and I'm so grateful for your platform. Uh, and my mission is really to make sure that the kids or adults don't take their stories to the grave, and we can break the cycle of um, shame, blame, and guilt earlier in their life so they can heal and you know really live the fulfilling life that they are meant to live. Yeah, you said that you didn't start telling your story until you were in your 40s. And that had me wondering, you know, why was that? Was it because of the shame and the guilt that, that came over you that made you feel like you should hide your story? So it's interesting. I And I didn't know this until recently. Most survivors, uh, when they share their stories, the average age is, age is like 52 when they tell their stories. And um, I think it's one in like five uh, survivors never tell their story from what I kind of know. And and men take even longer. Worse, and if you look at the whole problem, right? Like uh, how common it is, one in four girls and one in six boys are sexually abused before they are 18 years of old age. And I want to sit, you to sit with that statistic for a second. Um, yeah. Globally, one in four adults are living with some form of childhood sexual abuse. And childhood sexual abuse, as we define, is any inappropriate touching, uh, sharing content. It can be pornography. It can be inappropriate touching. In some cases, it, it can unfortunately be rape, which happens. So, um, and, and the reason why people don't share until later in their age, Mitzi, is more than 90% of the cases, children and we know are perpetrators. These could be, um, unfortunately, in some cases, a caregiver, a parent, um, an older sibling, a cousin, a teacher, um, somebody in your parish, a priest, or like in the temple, like it can be a whole host of people. And... Um, and that's the reason because you know you you are as a child you don't know how to navigate yeah. right so um so i think in my case and the my case thankfully my parents you know were very loving and supporting but there were many people that i knew that you know um who abused me from the from very early childhood until uh, probably 3 or 4 years old like i don't have my early memories <laughs> Um, till I was in my early 20s. Um, so um, you develop this sense of, um, you know, that something is wrong with you and or maybe this is the way to, you know, the way things are because you don't know the right sexual habits. You don't know that you're being groomed. You don't know that you, this was not your fault. Somebody else was the adult in the room. Right. So I carried a lot of shame, blame and guilt. And I didn't tell. Um, and I thought this was a thing of the past. Uh, and we can dive into that more into, you know, no, as we, no, keep on, keep on going. You are perfectly fine. You're on a roll. Take it. <laughs> So um, I, I, I didn't start telling the story until I was um, or, or sort of um, realized that something is wrong until in my mid 30s uh, in my on my path to my motherhood. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's really when my son was born. Um, I looked at him one day. Right? I was so obsessed, like the first month when he was born, I wouldn't let anyone hold 
him, like me and my husband, right? You know, we would take care of my parents were there, I remember. And I was obsessed, like we wouldn't keep a nanny at home. Like I wanted him to be secured when I got back to work. Mm -hmm. And thankfully between my parents and my in-laws, we had a lot of coverage for eight months. But as he grew up, like one day I was looking at him and he was like peacefully lying next to me. Maybe he was a toddler. And it and this was around the time when I had started experiencing abuse. And I realized, oh my goodness, if something were to happen to him, this would not be his fault, right? So, mm -hmm. so I think, yeah. So that's when I was like, I think I gave the permission to me to be like, oh, you know, this wasn't your fault, right? You you did the best you could to survive, you know, many yeah. different ways. So I think that led me down a path of, and there were many things happening around the same time in my life. I was an executive in a, a direct in a large uh, publicly traded company. I was also in a toxic kind of workplace uh, environment. And I was, I would get triggered by things that uh, were not right, right? Uh, more than many others would. And, and, and um, thankfully it was, um, I confided that into an executive coach at the time. I didn't, I hadn't told anybody the story. Um, and, and that led me on the path to healing, uh, right? As I was serving, I was getting um, involved with many different charities. Um, I, I learned about the adverse childhood experiences, the study that was done in US by CDC many years ago on around 70,000 um, you know, families. Um, and they cut across um, like different socioeconomic strata and you realize, um, and I can share more of the resources, Misty, so you can add it in your show notes, um, is, that physical abuse, child sexual abuse, emotional abuse, neglect, and you know, if you have an alcoholic parents uh, or drugs or all that abuse, um, and you don't have parents or caregivers who are stable, and if you have more one or more of those, then your brain is really wired like your brain wiring changes like permanently. Um, mm -hmm. There's a great book by Dr. Nadine Harris on the deepest well, which talks about like some of the long term effects. I, this was a life-saving thing for me when I stumbled upon that research. So I want to make sure the listeners that are here, if any of you are listening, this is, if you have experienced, I am so sorry. Uh, and no, you are not alone, right? The yeah. shame is not yours to carry. Correct. Correct. I think the way that you were able to to describe it was beautiful you know like you said when you when you were able to reflect and look at your son and to see him vulnerable and innocent and just you know and just figuring out life and enjoying life you you, you have to take a second to realize and put yourself in that position like you didn't know no better you know what I mean? It's like you said, you didn't know no better. And it was it was kind of one of my questions. Like, do you think there's a certain like age or sex or or race that truly makes someone more vulnerable than another? But in reality, it doesn't. You know, I in my opinion, after hearing what you said, in reality, it doesn't. You know, there's really no reason for people to think that this is okay. You know what I mean? There's no reason for someone in their mind to react onto another human being just because they can't control themselves you know what I mean and it's like you said it can happen anywhere and any anytime and I know one of my other questions was do you think fear is the biggest impact on why children doesn't speak up but it you kind of hit the, the point on that you know it's not just fear you know they don't know you know what I mean? Especially if you start this at such a young age, you really don't know this is happening to you. You think it's okay. You think it's normal. I've seen it in so many videos with different people speaking up about their sexual abuse and it has truly touched my heart to realize that. And, and it, to be honest, it breaks my heart to realize that there are people out there that don't know how to self-control themselves and and don't know how to filter out their mind to accept certain thoughts to be to be acceptable for themselves and they just allow anything so evil and destructive and harmful not just for themselves but for other people and it's it's saddening to me it's truly saddening to me because I don't think it's fair you know what I mean I don't think it's fair that people like yourself should go through a circumstance that's is not 
ideal you know what I mean it's not ideal because you wouldn't want that on your own child so why would you want that on yourself you know what I mean and I think that that part of that guilt and people holding that on as if they did something is it, it's, it's heartbreaking to me you know like people shouldn't hold that guilt like you said and I would love to get the, all of those resources so I can share it as well because I think having that platform to go and to find help and to seek a better understanding is important, you know, because a lot, I feel like a lot of people are living in their minds and just replaying the trauma and trauma and trauma and they, they can't escape from it, you know. But I think, I don't think I put it on here, but a lot of the times perpetrators become a perpetrator because they think it's okay because it was done to them you know and it's just an endless cycle you know what would you recommend for somebody who may be in this endless cycle and they do have this mindset but they don't know how to let it go what would you what would be some good advice for that yeah so um i'm at a very different place spiritually today right than i was a few years ago and um let's look at the 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 I don't have the data with me, but I, mm. through talking to people, I have, I have learned mostly that a lot of the times the, uh, there are different types of abusers, but many a times like, a, you know, there, there are those maybe elder children, right. Who mm. are exploring their sexuality and you find another child, right. And you're just acting out. You're just, you're exploring and there's a um, lack of sex education, Right. Yes. And maybe that this was the one time that they did it and they won't repeat it and they are still carrying shame and blame and guilt. So I think for those type of people, if you are in one of those categories, it's important that you whenever whenever, you know, everybody has a process. Right. But um, go through your own therapy forgive yourself and if possible take take ownership like what you did at the time you, you didn't know any better but now you know right and it's important that you take responsibility and 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 move on right um if possible um apologize um all the do it in a way that you don't re-traumatize that person and if, if they have specifically said that they don't want to make contact respect that boundary you know if you abused anyone you know that's the my message for those type of people yeah. uh there are pedophiles i i don't have expertise in that um i will let the authorities deal with that and there are yeah. all all those things happen right i agree and then there are people who might have genuine like um you know, some kind of a sexual, um, emotional, mental, like disorder, like, so one of my abusers, I later heard, learned, like one of my neighbors, they, they had some kind of a sexual kind of disorder, right? mental, mm -hmm. and they were under medication for a long time. And he even tried abusing his sister, but his family and his family knew. So he used to get beaten by his brother for a long time. And he's no more. His Most of his family is gone and died long gone. And I was talking to someone in their family this time because I was, you know, in that path where I was talking to my abusers. And when I shared, she, uh, you know, somebody in their family uh, who learned about it, then she's like, she was, I'm so sorry. right? Um, and they were new in that family. But I wish that, if you have a family member like that, my heart goes out to you, but just, just take care of them. You know, don't put other children at risk. Like you, like in this case, that family knew, right. And um, I would go to their place and they were so scared. Like I would go to this person's room and there were other kids. I know who he abused. Right. Uh, so I started playing that, um, you know, saving younger kids like me and my friends, like who were abused that don't go there or don't do this, you know, so which was not fair for our age. So if if there are these type of people and you are one of those family members who are aware, please seek mental health and protect other children. Right. I understand that you might be carrying shame and this thing. So which is where um, I, I bring up to the third, like the broader point, Mitzi, that I think this whole con notion around sexuality and sex education and things, I think needs to be a lot more, like there needs to be a lot more focused effort because, you know, we don't teach kids like safe sex habits, you know, their body parts. We don't talk about that. There is a lot of like, you know, um, taboo things, right? In that, mm -hmm. and that uh, combined with 
that vulnerable age where you don't know anything as much, it just, it's a perfect space where such abuses can thrive, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think that's going to be my key message for um, those, you know, particularly for abusers, you know, who are in that, um, yeah. you know, space. I, I, to be honest, I appreciate the fact that you were able to describe it in different levels, you know, describe it in different ways and different, and just in a different perspective for each one, because truly not a lot of people have that perspective. You know, they're not able to consider the ones that are mentally disturbed and the pedophiles and just the ones that are just curious and happen to make that one mistake. You know, I absolutely agree with you. I think everything that you said was right on the fact that there's lack of sexual um, education and just trying to educate people. All, all that they talk about is just don't do it. If you're young, just don't have sex, don't have sex. They don't explain. And then where do they find their, their education? They find it out in the world. They find it on the internet. They find it on social media. They find it on porn. You know what I mean? They find it in every direction that's truly not healthy. You know, and the and I think it's also the, the lack of communication in one's home that has been such a normal um, scenario for families is just to not talk about things, you know, and even brush it under the rug, you know. So when you were talking about how, <clears throat> excuse me, that family knew, but they couldn't really do anything. So it was like, my bad, sorry. You know, it, it's, a, it's a bad situation, but you know, it happens. It happens all the time, but it sucks because when you have a family, because I'm going to just be honest with you, yeah. my family has someone that we know that is a perpetrator, but me and my sister, me, because there's a total of six of us. There's a total of six of us in my family, four, five girls and one boy. And the youngest girl is not with us. And then my brother, he's out and doing his thing. But my older sister, um, she got her son by my other, my, my second oldest sister's daughter, you know, and ever since that happened we, me and my other sister was like, we can't have them around. You know what I mean? So like, we took the step to realize like, we can't have that sister and her children around our children because it's not safe, you know, because they don't see, they're not speaking up about it. They didn't do anything about it. They didn't, they didn't stop it. You know what I'm saying? And that's a problem. And the one with the son, she's in denial. So because she's in denial, it makes it difficult for me and my sister to sometimes even accept her son around. You know yeah. what I mean? Because sometimes we can see the differences that that has happened because of her, you know what I mean? Because of the cousin. So when we, when because he, whenever he's around, me and my sister, all we do is watch him like a hawk. You know what yeah. I mean? Because we feel like that's all we can do. Because one, he's so young, so, so young. He's like under 10 years old. That's all I can really say. But he's so young that we feel like because my sister moved to a whole different environment and no longer has contact with her, that that should help, you know? And so we've been trying to like watch him and trying to monitor him. But at the end of the day, that's us feel like that's as much as we can do because Every time we talk to her about getting help and, you know, accepting the fact that maybe he's 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 changed because of it, you know, it's always an argument, you know what I mean? And so to keep the peace, we kind of brush it under the rug, too. So I'm not saying I'm no better, but it's I feel like sometimes that's the only way to really help it sometimes. Yeah, you know, um, it's it's. Uh, thank you for your vulnerability and sharing, you know, I think it just. um the fact that you and I are talking, I think it's um, hopefully it gives permission to other people to realize that these things happen more than we would write, like to, you know, um, yeah. accept, right? And it's not easy sometimes to break the cycle. And mm -hmm. you know, I think you are doing exactly what you can, Mitzi, to be able to kind of manage that within your situation. And hopefully by encouraging, you know, um, whether therapy or whether, you know, proper kind of, uh, you know, um, healing process that yeah. you you will keep others from harm's way and help the person, right? In this case. Yeah. So, um, 
yeah and 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 that's that's the type of thing like there is i'm sure like they have some deep rooted fear of you know shame or trauma or like denial right yeah. like hey it just happened one time you know so um and that's that's just hard to change right it, it truly is and uh, to be honest with you i haven't told anybody and to be honest i haven't so this is my first time kind of opening up about the situation because it's it's a situation that is very taboo you wouldn't think about it happening in your own family I didn't know this was happening until years, until a year or two later. So when I found out, it was very like shocking and traumatizing to me where I couldn't look at them the same way anymore. You know what I mean? I couldn't look at my niece the same way. I couldn't look at my sister the same way. I couldn't look at them at all. Whereas like if I were to see them on the street, I'll probably like look the other direction just because I don't, I can't, I, I don't have that same that same respect I guess you know what I mean because I know I know people like yourself who has gone through that and it's not fair you know what I mean and I don't and I and I don't think it's fair that they didn't resolve the issue that they still are allowing it yeah I would I would Mitzi encourage you also in this case to perhaps talk to somebody like a therapist or like a some counselor or someone to see what's the best way to handle this um I am not a trained kind of person in this type of you know situation mm -hmm. right um, but I can tell you like you have your own setup like just just so you can break that cycle right yeah. uh, particularly if the kids are younger than 18 if any of them need help right um, I think that's just something to kind of think about um, there are other um um, you know other uh, resources around national hot hotline and I was trying to pull up the number real quick but I'll, I'll share with you in the you know you can include in the show notes or use it where if you suspect anybody is continuing to get like being abused you can call that helpline so you know there are people there are organizations that would um um, intervene in the such situations right because yeah. um, there's a fine line in the family especially where you know, um, you don't want the 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 caregivers kind of removed, but at the same time, like if are they really taking care of the children the way they need to at this point, right? Because yes. um, it's it's not fair for uh, the children, right? right. Um, yeah, yeah, that's so great. Oh, uh, thank you so much for your time, Kapo. I've been having such an enjoyable conversation with you. You know, we ended up going in a different direction than what I than what we initially hoped for. But I think this is what makes, you know, our conversation so authentic and true and real because, you know, we put our heart into it, you know, so that when the listeners get to really listen to this conversation, they get to think about it and really realize that we speak from the heart, you know, we speak from the the realness of what we've gone through. And I, I truly, truly enjoyed this conversation. I didn't even know what to expect. You know what I mean? Like I had an idea, but I didn't know it was going to be this great. So thank you. Um, so to wrap up the show before it cuts us off, what would be some great advice beyond the great advice that you've already been given us? What would be some great advice that you can leave us off with? So if um, my advice is going to be based on two different segments here, like people, I'm focusing on survivors, right? So if you are a child listening to this audience or a teenager, right? Um, if you are stuck in any kind of an abuse situation, there is a, a national sexual assault hotline at 800-656-HOPE, which is 800-656-4673. Call that hotline, right? Um, or talk to a trusted, you know, somebody you trust so they can figure out a way. And and I know the abuse can come from many people that you know, and you might be scared that you might lose them. Uh, just trust that you need care, need to be cared, right? You don't become the parent for, you know, where you are not being cared, right? Um, so that's my advice. Um, if you are an, uh, a survivor who's past that trauma, who the abuse has stopped, you might still be dealing with your healing issues, right? So if you haven't completely healed, I think one of the, the three things that I recommend people, adult survivors, is forgiveness. Write a note to your survivors. Remember, this is nothing to do with the abuser. It is all to do with taking your power back. Went all your emotions write in a piece of paper or letter or, uh, you know, don't have to, you don't have to send it, but it's just taking your power back. 
Um, remember the abuse happened in the past. You are a powerful being, your loving, kind soul, and you deserve, you're worthy of love. We see you, we you know, love you and we, we are here for you. So forgive and take your power back. Number two, give, um, you know, go through therapy if you haven't gone through therapy. And number three, um, engage in a cause. Number three is service. You know, find a cause where you're able to young, help younger ones or you're able to, um, you know, perhaps you're not ready to share your story, but perhaps you can help other people, right? Other kids. There are all kinds of, you know, organizations. So that's my advice. And um, I personally, my mission has become with just to wrap it up, Misty, um, to really help sexually abused children and women claim their power, use their voice, live with joy and create a kinder world. Right. So I am launching a mastermind for adult survivors who are executives or business owners who might have had like really other outwardly success, but they are still living their disjointed kind of life, right? Um, and I'm launching a monthly forum. Um, so if you are interested, reach out to me. Uh, my website is um, https um, colon. I'll include that in the in the show notes, but it's connects.com. And you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I'll share my email as well. Um, so, you know, um, I really want to impact 100 million lives in 10 years so that we can break this cycle. This has got to stop. And this will only happen if powerful adults like us, you know, we come forward and start telling so that our younger generation doesn't quarry into their 20s, 30s, 40s. And hopefully that statistics changes 10 years from now. Yeah. Yes, I absolutely agree with you. I thank you for that advice because just the fact of giving themselves their power back is very important because like you said, sometimes it'll take people years and years before they even realize that they're giving their power away because they have so much inside of them. And I think that is very powerful and true that, you know, if you are going through this now and you're seeking to know the truth, one, you're already on the first step. You're already on the first step to success because you 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 know in your heart that something's not right. So if you already know in your heart that something's not right, then keep going in that direction. Keep going in that direction because you will find your peace at the end of the road. I've seen it so many times where people like yourselves have said that once they've they've gained their power back and and they started helping others and they started to really feel like they're making a difference that they didn't realize that they started for themselves and realize they helped millions of other people in, in the long run so your mission to help in 10 years all thousands and millions of people I applaud you and I hope and I pray that this video and this the conversation of ours touches at least one person's life because I know that's going to make a ripple effect on the people around them you know even if it's just one person it will truly affect thousands of others along the way and I thank you for this time because I, f I truly did feel your sincerity that you were able to make me open up in ways that I don't open up to people, <laughs> but it was, it was so, it was such a, a real conversation because people need to, to gain that control and that self-awareness and realize they're not alone and that there are millions of people, sadly, sadly to say, but there are literally millions of people who are going through this, you know, so seek the help, you know, I'm going to have all of that information that she's going to provide me on my website. You're going to be able to see a, a beautiful picture of her and you can be able to find all the links to, to get the help that you need to find that, that, that closure that you're truly looking for, because let's be honest, it's closure that you're looking for. You're looking for that closure to, to find out why, you know, and if you're on that direction, well, then what, what would you like to say? I've seen it in you. Oh. Yes. Yes. And closure sometimes um, doesn't have to come from having a conversation with the abuser. The closure can be you accepting yourself fully, right? Yes. The closure is, um, like like in my case, it was my son looking at him and going, this wasn't my fault. And that person, little girl, I need to see her fully. In your case, it may be simply that, that you accept yourself fully and know that um, 
it's not your fault. And 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 globally, there are billions of people, sadly, like one in four means if there are 8 billion people, probably, you know, you're looking at 1.5 to 2 billion people, like who, who experience yeah, this, and that's we don't true. talk about it. Right? That's very true. Oh, thank you so much, Kalpa. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's our show, sadly. But if you, like I said, if you want to know more about Kalpa, go onto her website, you'll find the link and you'll find other great conversations that she's had with other um, <clears throat> individuals about this topic. If you're really serious about it, continue on. Don't stop. Let the, let the balls keep rolling because you're in the right direction. We support you. I support you. Kalpa supports you. We support you behind this, this mission that you're on. So take care. Be safe, y'all. Bye. Bye.